I want to thank Mantis for sponsoring today's video. My only instructions from them are to give my honest review about the Mantis X8. With that being said, Mantis has not seen this video. They're watching it for the first time as you are. Let's have some fun today. I'm gonna to cover five things in today's video. Number one, how to use this product. Number two, what it does. Number three, how to interpret the information. Number four, good and what's bad about this product. And number five, who is this for? Let's get right into it. Enchanté. The Mantis comes in this slick little case. It's nice to have somewhere to put it. Because the product is so small, it's easy to misplace it. Setting the X8 up is straightforward. First, you'll want to install the Mantis Universal base plate onto your bow. The Universal plate is very nice because you can buy as many as you want and put them on as many bows as you want so that you can switch the Mantis between bows very easily and quickly. To install the plate, they include easy instructions. Number one, clean and dry surface with included wipes. Number two, remove red backing from tape. Number three, press adapter on with strong pressure for 20 seconds. Number four, let cure for 24 hours before use. The next step is to install the Mantis app. Mantis started out in the firearms industry, so there's multiple apps, so make sure you get the Mantis X archery app, uh, not the shotgun or not the handgun one. The quick start guide's handy. Download the Mantis app, attach the Mantis to your bow, and open the Mantis X app. I attach it to the bow first because we wanna let that stickiness get real sticky to that bow. Open the Mantis app, hit the only button on the Mantis X8, then hit connect. And it should scan for it and connect real quick. It'll calibrate it real quick. And then here you can choose recurve or compound bow, right or left hand, and then you can go ahead and hit start. And now you're ready to take your first shot. And that's how you can set it up in a controlled environment. But if you're out in the field, this is how I like to set it up. To get ready for a shooting session, it's super easy. You just wanna set your bow on a flat surface. I'm just using the ground right now. And then push the button on the Mantis. It's gonna flash green. Then at that point, you wanna open your Mantis app, hit connect. Let that load for a second, boom. And then it's gonna calibrate. There we go, already done calibrating select. I'm shooting a traditional bow, right-handed. Hit start on your training session and you're ready to take your first shot. It's a prototype, just give me some time. The 3D targets look pretty real today. Huh, interesting. In my opinion, the worst thing when shooting a bow is to know something's off, to know your screen up, to know something's wrong, but not know what it is. And that is what the Mantis is good at, is telling you what you are screwing up on. The X8 clearly shows you everywhere you move your bow so that you can see where you're not consistent. Now, this tracks to the smallest amount of movement, things that you can't see with your eyes. So knowing that, knowing that it tracks every single movement, from there your mind can explode about how this tool could help you out. Here are a few things that I've found to be beneficial. It tells you if your release is good, if your setup is consistent, how long you hold. It measures when you release the arrow and then when the arrow has left the bow. It measures the cant or the tilt of the bow. It allows you to record all of your shots on the exact same size of target that you're using so you can match your bad shots with the problem that you messed up on that shot. By looking at the data, you can see exactly where you messed up and why that shot was off target. One of my absolute favorite things about the X8 is called the stability score. It's the very end of your shot, basically the hold. Once you draw back, you settle on the target, and when you are holding right there, it calculates how much you're moving around. Some people hover real small right on the bullseye. Some people are like a pinball going everywhere. Depending on where you are on this spectrum is how good your stability score will be. So basically, this little tool tracks your every movement and from that you can gather all this data to see what you should improve on. The best way to talk about interpreting the information is going to be to just do a shooting session. So I'm gonna take 20 shots, record all of them in the app, then I'll show you how I analyze it in order to correct or what I think I would need to work on. So my favorite way to use the app is to record each shot. 
you will need to do it sequentially. This is a really simple task and just takes a few seconds. Here is a quick example. After your first three shots, you'll see your shots are down low. So I'm gonna select number one, you go to placement, and then you can just drag and place exactly where that shot was. So you can walk up to the target, see exactly where it is, go to number two, place it right where it was, and number three, and now that is gonna keep score for you as well as allow you to see, oh, look, number one was off. Let's go back to the trace and see what I did wrong. If you don't mark them sequentially, then you won't be able to tell which arrow was actually off. So that's actually very important. You can mark it after every shot or I only do a group of three so it's easy to do once I'm done because I remember where I hit. Okay, so let's jump into the phone and analyze a shooting session. So right here, you'll have all your sessions. Let's jump into this one here. Now we'll start off looking at everything. So this is the trace of the bow. I can go to my setup and it'll show the setup of every shot and you can see that's fairly consistent. You can go to your hold, which is the yellow and then the orange and you can see how consistent it is. You can see sometimes I would come quite a bit higher than other times and then you can finally go to the release. You also have here on the top, we're on the trace right now, you can go to the pitch and cant. This is how you are canting the bow and you can see how consistent you are throughout the timer, how long you set up, hold, and how quick your release is, and then placement. This is where you hit the target. Now, this does not happen automatically. You have to manually enter your placement because the X8 is not tracking the target, it's tracking your movement. By placing your arrows on the target, you can connect the two to get the best information possible. So you can see that I had a decent shooting session for me, and this is where I like to start analyzing the data. Number two and 12 are up and to the left. I'll go ahead and check on number two, and we'll come back to trace, and we'll see what went on. You can either play through the trace, or what I like to do is you can just grab this, and just scroll through. So we come up with the setup, come down into the hold, the orange. The orange is what the stability score up here at the top right is made of. So 86.1 on this shot. Well, the white is when you release the arrow. The red X is when the arrow leaves the bow. So you can see right at the shot, I drop down real quick, right there. So I'll take that into consideration and let's go back to the placement and let's take a good shot like number 15 here and let's go back to the trace and let's see what happened on release get to the red where I release the arrow and that one went to the side and then up so it's completely different I can see on my bad shot I jerked the bow down but what is interesting here is I see that every time I'm releasing the bow at the white releasing the arrow at the white X then the red X is to the left meaning I'm jerking the bow to the left after I release. So I release and in the split second it takes for the arrow to leave the bow, I'm moving to the left a little bit. And I do have a few shots up here to the left, like number nine. Again, the red X is to the left. Number 10, red X is to the left. 11, red X is to the left. I'm seeing a pattern here of when I release, I'm moving the bow to the left. And if you take a look at this footage, I have a tendency to drop down on my release. And when I drop down, I think I might pull the string a little bit, causing me to jerk to the left where it's not a perfectly smooth release. I try to compensate that by jerking the bow to the right, right after I release. And this is all, of course, subconscious. And so you can see I'm overcompensating right here on the shot where it jumps to the right immediately after I shoot. So what this, is, what this is basically saying is on my release, before the arrow leaves the bow, I always somehow bring the bow to the left just a little bit, but then immediately after <laughs> I'm bringing the bow right back to the right. So maybe the force of the release is causing me to jerk to the left and then I try to overcompensate mentally probably, subconsciously to the right. And so I take some of this information, I go back and I look at the footage of me shooting and I'm saying, oh wow, I think I would prefer to release a little bit more straight back rather than dropping down on that release and flicking the string. And I believe that is causing me 
to shoot high sometimes. With all this information, we can do a ton of things, but this kind of relays into the pros and cons list that I made about the X8. So let's jump into the next section and we'll talk more about this. Now, one of the things you could say as a con is this little error message where it just says disconnected, but you can immediately reconnect it and continue your shooting session. The reason it disconnects is because your bow and the phone or the mantis in your phone got separated. I don't know what that distance is. I have a target up there at 25 yards. That's the distance I separated it just now and it disconnected. So real quick, actually, I wanna test this out. See how far I walk away before it disconnects. Okay, so let's reconnect it. At the bottom right, there's a resume button. You hit that resume and it's scanning to reconnect. Okay, so the target up here is 25 yards from me. And so let's start walking away. And let's see when this disconnects. We're still good here, probably about 10 yards out. We're still connected this time. Well, now where do I go? We're still connected, 25 yards away. Let's walk into the woods. There we go, disconnection message right there. We're about 10 yards past the target, and so 30, 20 to 30 yards maybe is where this will disconnect for you. But I don't see any reason why you would separate your your bow and your phone, but just keep that in mind if that's what happens. So quick correction, when I'm actually recording my shots, I tend to leave my bow back there and then I walk forward to the target with my phone to record each individual shot. Therefore, if it's beyond 20 yards, it may disconnect. I'm shooting from 20 right now and it hasn't disconnected yet, but from our test, up to 30 yards, it will disconnect. And so, not positive the best solution. You could always use binoculars to look down and see exactly where your arrow hit, or memorize it, or if you're at a close distance, just record it like I am now. But if you're shooting at 40 yards and recording your shots, or even further, it's gonna disconnect when you walk to the target with your phone. When it disconnects, it'll be flashing green instead of solid, so let's see how long it takes to reconnect. And there you go. So if you're okay with doing that every time, you can take your phone as far away as you want and reconnect that quickly. But just wanted to say that's something you'll wanna be aware of when separating these two. Another possible con to this product is, let's say I just took my shot and I come over here just to set the bow down, boom, right there. That recorded as a shot because I set it down so hard. Or maybe you have a hanging hook, like over here, and you go up to hang your bow after your shot, and let's say you let it fall just a little bit, they record that as a shot, rightly so. And I was like, this is the most annoying thing because you've got this stability score that I'm trying to keep up for each session of shooting, and I do that and I get a 20 or a 50, and my stability score is thrown way off. Here's a good example right here. It says stability score 45, play it through, and it looks nothing like a shot. And so, that right there. And then I'm like, oh wait, I just shot three arrows, but it says four. So really all you need to do is just go ahead and hold that down and it'll ask you to delete the shot and you're good to go. And now we reset our stability score and it's proper now. Fantastic, I was about to say, this is the one thing that Mantis really needs to change. And then I figured it out and it was my problem. So just keep that in mind, if a shot looks way off or something, check on it and maybe accidentally record a shot when you didn't actually shoot your bow. A lot of the potential cons to the X8 have to do with who you are, and that'll come in the next section. But what the X8 does is it tells you what you are messing up on. And you could say the con is, is that it doesn't tell you how to necessarily fix it. The app does tell you how to use the app. There's these little question boxes on the top of each page. You can click on that. It tells you how to interpret all the information. The app is extremely easy to use. Sit down for 15 minutes and you'll learn it. It's much easier than something like Instagram. And with that, how do you correct your shot? How do you move forward? And I see this as a massive opportunity for Mantis with the X8 is I think it would be the most valuable thing possible for them to have instructional videos that say, hey, if you're jerking on your release to the left, here are three troubleshooting things that you could do. Number one, you are probably an expert in a pro in archery could come up with these points. And if that was incorporated to the app, you wouldn't only have the diagnostic of what you're doing wrong, you'd also have the personal coach to tell you what 
to correct. A lot of you guys are so much better than me in archery and might just by knowing the information from the X8 know exactly what to fix immediately. But you could say that's a con depending on who you are and how much you know about archery. But if you really want to dive in, of course, you can figure it out just by looking at the information. I could spend days just looking through the shots and just thinking through why did that happen? What's going on here? Pairing it with filming yourself just brings it all together. And me as a intermediate archer, I would say, it allows me to really dive in and understand and focus on each shot more. I think there's a big opportunity there. And Mantis, if you're interested in some instructional videos, I know someone. Let's hit up a few pros real quick. I think the biggest and first one that I noticed is due to the stability score and knowing your shots are being recorded, it makes me think and focus more about every shot. That alone has really improved my shot. And it just goes to show that how important it is to focus when you're shooting a bow. It's so easy to go fling arrows and there's a time and place for that. But if you're really wanting to improve, you're probably gonna need to focus and analyze every shot and try to have the best shot possible every time. And the X8 assists in that. So I think the price is a pro. You're like, how can a $140 little piece chip be a pro? Well, this is basically like a personal coach in your pocket all the time for one price. You pay for like one shooting session or two shooting sessions, but you get this for as long as you want. As you continue to learn to analyze the data, if you are a coach, having your students use this, I could see how this would be so valuable because it shows you beyond what you can see. Now the battery life is solid. When I first started shooting, I would charge it every few times and then I was like, let's see how long it'll go before it dies. Right now, I think I'm 12 sessions in with no charge, 20 to 40 minute shooting sessions each time. I think that's plenty good for me. Being able to see your consistency is what it's about. How consistent are you with your cant? How consistent are you with your setup? How consistent are you with your hold? Let's take a look at the hold and what's the optimal time of hold where I have my best shots? Is it one, two, three seconds? How long shall I be holding to have my best shots? The pros to this product are fairly obvious. There's so much you can learn from it and the data is endless. But I think we need to jump into who this is for because depending on your goals in archery, this may or may not be for you. The X8 is for someone who wants to get better at archery, but even more importantly, someone who will take action. Let me explain. is what really matters. So who is the X8 for? It's not for the person who doesn't want to get better at archery and it's not for the person who doesn't know how to interpret the information or who's not willing to interpret the information. And I'm in that group. I don't know how to or didn't know how to, but as I've studied it, I've learned how to interpret this information. But if you're willing to learn how to interpret this information, I believe it will make you a better archer than before you used it. <laughs> And I know for me that whenever I want to dive into archery, it'll be part of my routine to use the X8 in order to analyze my shot because I'll take every advantage I can get in order to get better at archery. But I hope today that you know more about the Mantis X8 than before you started watching this video. And that's exactly why I reached out to Mantis to ask them to sponsor this video because I like their product so much. I just wanted to team up with them. So thanks Mantis for making this video possible as well as thank you all for watching. Have a fantastic day. Oh, and stay shatterproof.